Rock Eyes would like to welcome Veronica Freeman, Benedictum. How are you doing today? I'm doing great until I looked on your site and see that you haven't reviewed my last CD. Yeah, Dave, get on it. <laughs> <laughs> Blame Dave, Dave for that. Dave, don't, don't, Dave, Felix, don't make me. Dave Felix, is his, it's his fault. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah, I noticed how you're passing the buck there, but that's okay. Oh, he's no, a fall cool. man. Yeah. That's all right. No, I know he's a fall guy. It's all good. But, uh, yeah, we need to take care of that. I'm searching and searching and going. Matter of fact, the one before that isn't on there either, and I thought we were like all family and stuff. Oh, uh, that's so. Dave's fault. Blame Dave. Yeah. Okay, we'll blame Dave. No problem. We'll just, we'll just blame it on Dave. Cool, cool. So, how you been? Not bad, not bad. So what you been up to? Jeez, what have I not been up to? Ah, uh, let's see. Well, according to your site, we only have two albums, but we have four. <laughs> uh, earlier this year, at the end of, of 2013, we released, uh, Benedictum released an album called Obey. Right. And uh, that was oh, that was a lot of fun. I, I really liked that album um, a lot. I think it went kind of back to, like, the first, Two, and then there was Dominion, which had a, a little bit of a different vibe to it. And then there was Obey, which is kind of like in between the two. And uh, at, at the same time, I got asked if I would like to do a solo album, uh -huh. which was kind of weird because uh, at, at first it was like, um, okay, I, I was like, sure. But you know how it is. I, the not to not that I'm complaining, but that the budget wasn't quite enough to cover everything, and especially if I if I was requested to use different musicians, but I didn't really want to do that because Pete and I have some other music together that we've written, so that kind of worked out well. That it he and I got the chance to. Uh, put some of the stuff out there that wouldn't have been quite a, a good fit for Benedictum, but, you know, they wanted something more melodic, more of a rock, melodic, hard rock type of album. Right. So that's what I've been doing, like, ever since then and, and, and beyond, because it's been, a, uh, it's been quite the journey to get that stuff done, because it's different, and um, I have to feel comfortable with it <laughs> and uh it, but it's turning out it's turning out rather well now i feel a lot happier with it i had to kind of not completely go back to the drawing board but make some changes in the way some of the stuff was approached and some of the stuff was done and in the during that time it was kind of a, a series of of kind of cool events I finally decided to get off my ass and get a twitter account which i'm still not very good at that <laughs> but um Someone reached out to me, and they're like, wow, if you ever needed anything, blah, blah, blah. You know, I, I have a studio over in Boston, and by the way, I know Michael Sweet from Striper. And he's on the same label, and I guess this guy has also done some stuff from for Frontiers. And I was like, well, you see, Michael, let him listen to some of my stuff. And I guess he actually did. And the next thing you know, um, using the little flight miles that I have left to get my happy ass over to Boston, and we, uh, he wrote and produced two songs. I mean, that just happened last month. He wrote and produced two songs for the record, and that was quite the experience. So it kind of was a game changer. Cool, 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 cool. So, you know, meeting Michael Sweet and stuff like that and, you know, recording did anything, you know, really stand out in your mind working with him? Every everything stood out in my mind. To be completely honest with you, it was so unexpected, and it was like, okay. And he's a busy guy. I think he's actually working on the Sebastian Bach record right now, which he's producing. And plus, he's got a solo record, and then he's got the what is it, the Lynch Suite thing coming out, and then they have the new. Start. I mean, he's busy. So I was very, very honored. Don't get me wrong. I'm just used to, okay, having the stuff to work on and, and get familiar with. And I had to go out there. I didn't know what I was going to be singing. It was scary. And anybody that's done that kind of stuff, it's, you'll know that was a scary position to be in for me because I get real nervous about it. Flew out there, and, I mean, most of this stuff is done, and I'm going to throw out there, I'll definitely be doing a fundraising campaign <laughs> to cover this stuff. A lot of this stuff was done in good faith. I cannot tell you how grateful I am for all the people that have been instrumental over every aspect of my so-called career or whatever you want to call it, but being able to do what I'm passionate about, but to, to get out there and um, he wanted to work in a particular studio and it was just amazing. I had never, it was called Spirit House Studio in uh -huh. Massachusetts and it's 
freaking amazing. Wow. And I, so I, they, you know, you stay there with just for one night, and I'm like, oh my god, you know, how, how am I going to afford this and stuff? And I'm borrowing money, and I'm, you know, he's like, okay, just get me later when you can. And I'm just like, I can't believe this is really happening. It was absolutely an amazing experience and I was sitting there in awe wow. and watching him work I have a lot of video of it which I'll post later I'm really bad at that but I was so overwhelmed by what was going on and then we went into um, the Kenny Lewis the guy that had reached out to me and uh, he owns a place called mixed emotion studios and we went there to track my vocals and do the uh, his solos and stuff so to watch him work was really amazing and then the last thing of course was the vocals and by that time i'm like already tired and it was brian i'm telling you it was one of the roughest things for me because he's very very precise in what he wants and the approach that he wants you to have and i'm used to having a little more leeway you know doing the v thing and kind of putting my own inflection on it here and there but it was like no you're gonna do it this way wow <laughs> and and that's what I did. It was cool, though. It was, I learned a lot. I went to the store. I said, I'll be back. Went to the store. Got a box of Kleenex because I knew I was going to burst into tears, and that's exactly what I did. <laughs> and that's okay because that's like my little process. You know, I have to break through that you know, emotional barrier thing right, yeah. and, and, and get to the heart of it. And one of the songs is, was a little bit it was challenging for me. Right. And the other one was kind of more in my, you know, kind of in my comfort zone. Right. But, uh, I wouldn't have traded that for anything. I kind of felt like I was, it was almost surreal. It was like I was in a dream the whole time. Cool. It was really cool. And people that came together to make it happen, and uh, shout out to Peter Tintendo, and he's got his pr another project called the Venus and Mars Project, and he did some guitar work on some of the stuff, too. Just really, really creative, talented, wonderful people that all pulled together to help me. Cool. cool. Definitely cool. But... <laughs> now, let, let's get to touring. You know, I, I know you do the recording and stuff like that, but, but how difficult, you know, in these times is, is touring for, for a band? I won't speak for any, anybody else but myself okay. and, or, and, and Benedictum, and, and I, but I'm sure that I speak for many, and that is it's frigging next to impossible. If you're looking at it to make money, good luck. Right. <laughs> There's many that can, but you know, no, seriously, it, it, everything has changed, so the approach is different. Uh, make sure you have a lot of cool merch because that's what you're going to need. Clubs don't, you know, a lot of times it's like, well, they'll do a get. You, you don't get a guarantee. You will get like a percentage of the door. But if you're thinking of traveling, again, speaking for myself, if I've got to go and travel to another state or it's a distance where I'm going to need to fly because I can't take time off of work, you know, because it's, it's, I have to pay the bills. And until this does that, I will continue to have to do what I have to do to, to survive. Right. So it's very, very difficult. You know, uh, in, in Europe especially, a lot of the times, you know, they'll include lodging and all that kind of stuff. That's kind of like part and parcel of the whole deal. Right. For a U.S. band that is known in Europe, that's great, but you got to get there. Right. So that's why we were very fortunate when we first started to be able to go there a lot. Now, um, you know, the last thing that we did was in June, and that was with uh, Leather Leone and, and with the Sound of Thunder, and that was an absolute blast. But we only did like three dates, and we had to kind of keep it within a drivable distance, but we still had to fly to get there, you right. know, and rent the vehicle and the whole bit. It's, it's hard to make it fiscally, make, to have it make a fiscal sense. And, but it's what I love to do. A lot of people like the, the creative process, and that's cool, but I would much rather be out there sweating on the stage and meeting people and connecting with people and being in my element that way right. than I would be behind the glass in the studio right. any day. Cool, cool, cool. Um, tell me a little bit about Sweet Death Apparel. I don't awesome. know much about it, and so you could give me some input. I would be happy to. Um, gosh, I'll try to make it concise, as you can see. I, I love the chat. <laughs> um, these were, when I went to NAM last year, well, this year, actually, uh, I was there with a friend of mine named Jack McKissick, and he is, 
has a really, really cool show called Power Chord. He has it on iTunes radio, but he also has like a, uh, it's a video video show, so it's going to be, uh, the next season is going to be quite something from what I understand. But uh, I was hanging out with him and was also there with Heavy Metal Television, and he happened to run into a friend of his who has this apparel and stuff, and I was looking for somebody to work in conjunction with, not so much just as an as an endorsement, but more like being involved like an artist rep to where I have my own little thing going on. Right. And so what we're working on is, because, you know, I'm not 20. I'm not going to compete with some 20-year-old little hottie model, which is, you know, right. that's not who I am. So I am who I am. I'm built like I'm built. So I thought, well, how cool would it be to be able to have have uh, kind of like my own line, and what we're going to do is still in the in the startup process is try to you know think outside the box, do something different. So they'll have their T-shirts and their and their uh, apparel, but they'll be like a special V section. And I have people I work with that do special customizing and shredding and doing really cool stuff and adding chain and stuff like that. And you can get like the V version of their stuff. So right. we're working together to do something a little bit different, and that's and it's a sweet. I believe it's Sweet Desk Entertainment, Sweet Desk Net. Right. So um, it's they're they're great people, uh, Ray and AJ, and so far so good. We're just going to see where it takes us. Uh, their website, I do believe, it's Sweet Desk Net, uh-huh. is just up. And they're also, it's like Sweet Death Entertainment, so they have other things like schedules of concerts and stuff. So it's, you know, they're, they're trying to encompass more than just one thing. But right. I absolutely love their, I love their stuff. Cool. So I wear it all the time. <laughs> cool, cool, cool. You also mentioned uh, heavy metal uh, television. Yeah. Can you tell me anything about that? You just mentioned that? I would love to tell you about that. That, you know, I can't give you the exact start date, but I've been working with them for a little bit now, and... Um, gosh, it was the uh, end of last year, I think, and it was just a really cool opportunity, and so what I am is like a VJ. Right. So if you remember, you know, MTV, when they would have the Headbangers Ball or whatever, right. and they'd have the VJs introducing the, the videos, it's like that, but on steroids. So what it is, it's an actual, it's internet television, so you don't log on, it's just heavymetaltelevision.com. Cool. And... You just go there, and there it is. And it'll be 24 hours, it's always free, streaming videos, and then they have really cool VJs and stuff, specialty shows on the weekends, and it's a growing thing, and I'm really excited to be a part of it as it, you know, we go through a little growing pains here and there and then seeing new ideas develop, and it's very, very cool. And they're going to be doing actually a fundraising thing because there's so many behind-the-scenes things that need to happen, like equipment and, and you know, adver- all, all that kind of stuff, advertising and, and kind of getting, getting known out there. So I think that's going to start in October, and I'm really excited for them and to be a part of it. It's a, it's a lot of fun. You know, you get to, I get to dress up and sit there and be goofy. <laughs> Cool, cool, <laughs> cool. Well, I like to do. That sounds like fun, you know. Mm-hmm. So, uh, let's go back to Benedictum. Um, let's do that. What What does the future, you know, look for, you know, with Benedictum? I am hoping that, and this is, I'm just being real about this because I have no reason not to be. Because there's so many people out there that promise the moon or tell you, yeah, they're going to get you this show or that show, or they're working on a tour for you. Oh, I can do this, and then all of a sudden they drop off the map. Or, you know, I've I've been very blessed to have a lot of good people, and I've really been running into a lot of people that just are not making it happen and I'm not about throwing anybody under the bus so I won't do that but just do be careful for people out there that not everybody that says they can do something can especially when it comes to the booking end of stuff right. but I it is my intent to allow things to fall into place for us to get to Europe if not this year then the next year uh, we were hoping to go in November I'm not sure if that's going to happen and but uh, I would like to do more shows and because that's what I love to do. All of us love to do that. We want to play. And I don't want to have to play. Now, I don't mind doing cover stuff, obviously. I'm known for doing, you know, the deal covers and stuff like that or whatever. But it, that's fine. But I would love to go out there and be able to, you know, play our own music. But right. 
I still want to play, so if that means doing something else, then that's cool too. But that's our first uh, our first love and what we would really like to be doing. Cool, cool, cool. Well, Veronica, I mean, are you hearing this a lot from from people that you talk with? Oh yeah, oh yeah. Okay, so I know I'm not an anomaly in any way. No, not at all. You know, like I said, you know, you know, every band's different, and and majority all they do is want to tour. You know, mm-hmm. nothing about recording stuff no more. They just want to tour, 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 because they love meeting the fans and, and you know being on stage, and that's what their goal right. is. And really, you know, the recording part of it is, uh, I, I guess, you know, if they have to, they have to. But you know, majority of the music is is, is going to be, you know, basically stolen. You know, if you want to put it that way, because, you know, people, you know, bootleg stuff and all that other kind of stuff. So they rather just tour because they love it, you know. Right. So. And there is something to be said, and, and a, a true artist will will feel this way, too. It's just that you can be the most true artist in the world. you still got to pay your bills. Right. And it's, you know, when you have, there is something to be said for that creative process. I love that too. It's very cathartic for me and I and I learn a lot when I'm in the studio. I learn about a lot about myself. I push myself and I learn what my limitations are and and strive to to break some through some of those barriers. And it's very that's all well and fine and it's really a fun thing to remember where your little song started at when you first were thinking about it and you were scratching out the little lyrics and kind of humming the melody and then when you hear the final product i like that that's right. very cool but that's not the only thing i want to be doing i mean that's cool because you do that and you get it out there and that used to be the the way of the world and you put it out and then you go to her to support the thing you just put out but a lot of times it's not happening like that. So I really admire the people that, you know, have the savvy to get out there and the ability and the resources to get out there and do it. Cool. Because it's not as easy as it used to be, but, you know, more power to you. Right, right, right. Well, Veronica, it was great talking to you, and, um, you know, you gave a lot of information that uh, I'm sure fans want to know, you know. um, I hope so. Yeah, (laughs) I definitely think so. So would you like to say anything to the fans out there? Oh, God, I just love you. I mean, everybody has been so good to me and to the band. I mean, you can check us out on Facebook. There's a Benedictine group and a Benedictine page. There's a Veronica page. It's Veronica the V. Freeman. And, uh, of course, my personal profile and all that stuff. And very soon there's going to be veronicafreeman.com. And... It is also my pleasure. I, I, I promise myself that every time I get to do an interview, I give a shout-out to uh, a particular person or business, and I would definitely like to do that for my friend Dave over at VS Cables. And even though those are my initials, it is not uh, after me. <laughs> so vfcables.com, and they've got uh, really, really, you know, they're really high, and he, he makes the cables himself, very high quality, and, and he's been a good friend, and I know he works really hard, and he loves music as well. So, you know, get a hold of me. Uh, love you guys, and I love you for doing this, Brian. No really problem do. at all. No you problem. Know, I know you're passionate about it. <laughs> Thanks very much, man. Thank you. Bye-bye. Bye.